Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, Joey McGuire's got a warning for Red Raider fans. We're talking former Hilltoppers, now Red Raiders, along the offensive line, and realignment missiles have been launched. We prepare for imminent impact. Next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Everything runs through Lubbock. Great to see you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network. Always appreciate being your first listen on YouTube or wherever you got this podcast. He's the only Chris Level. I'm Casey Cowan and Chris, we are back to wrap up the week on a few different fronts. Of course, we are diving in to Texas Tech football and some things that we took away from <laughs> Texas Tech Media Day upcoming. We'll hear some sound from Joey McGuire as, rel- as well as our guy, Rusty Stats, I believe, making his auditory debut on Locked On Texas Tech. We'll get to a pair of old linemen from Western Kentucky that are hoping to factor in big for Texas Tech this season and more coming up in just a bit. But of course, we also have to hit the realignment radar, Chris. And when words like imminent are being used to describe upcoming action, uh, that sounds like soon because typically it's like, I don't know. 24, 48 hours, 36, 72. Could it be two weeks? Maybe next summer we'll circle back. You get a lot of timelines <laughs> of wide varieties within this conversation. <laughs> but yeah, imminent action is some of the phrasing that's being used out there today. And I guess I may have said this a few times this week. I guess we start by looking to the desert and Tucson, Arizona. Where do we go? Where do we start? Yeah, I think depending on when people listen to this, uh, Arizona could be, you know, uh, a member or, you know, (laughs) stepping across the finish line as a member of the Big 12 Conference for 2024. I think it's that close. I think it's, um, you know, when 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 the Big 12 folks get together and they go ahead and vote uh, to say, hey, man, if they apply – Wink, wink, you know, like, well, you know, we're, we're, we're let's vote to see, hey, we good with letting them in. And uh, that, that's that gone on uh, just like it did with Colorado. And then guess what happened with Colorado? I know we're all shocked they remember the Big 12. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> I think uh, I, now after that, though, that's where it gets a bit, uh, you know, cloudy. I, I think that you will read and hear, and I, I hear the same, that Utah, uh, contrary to what you may you know, I've read or heard or whatever in, in mo- recent months and all that. They are, they are kind of pushing forward here toward the Big Twelve. Uh, they are, they understand the scenario. I think they're um, w- working toward that end. Uh, Arizona State, however, is, you know, I, I guess to, to go back to your stages of grief, uh, they're, they're 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 still processing. Uh, they are not. They're, they're uh, a little further back. I, I, yeah, I, I and I and I think uh, I don't know. Look, I don't know what Arizona State. It, it's their leadership. Um, his name is Michael Crow. I think it's well documented that he's just kind of flighty. He's kind of stuck in his ways. I, I don't know how you want to uh, put it, but he's just not real keen on this whole thing. But uh, you know, with, with, when change comes, you have to adapt and thrive. And right now, he's just not ready to to do that just yet. Now, maybe by the time you read this, that. Because I've even heard mention of, hey, Arizona State, we're going to give you a deadline and we need to know in or out. Because at this point, if you get Arizona, man, you, you know, the, the the dam is starting to break or it's already broken on the Pac-12. I think that if you're, if you're the Big 12, you would absolutely love to have Arizona State and Utah, I think – but Arizona and Colorado were always the two that you were kind of keen on because they were the most interested. These are power five members. And, and I, I don't think that you are, you know, in a, in a bind, if you are just going to say, okay, Arizona state, you know, or, or and then maybe it costs Utah, but maybe we'll just sit at 14 for a little bit, you know, and I, yeah. I don't know. I don't think that's what they want to do, but so I, I guess my point is the big 12 seems to be doing just fine. Uh, now that Arizona is – because I, I think Arizona – I can't say that they are, quote-unquote, excited about this. <clears throat> but they've understood the scenario. I think they've known what was best for them. They've been working toward this. 
you you will read a lot. They were kind of ahead of the process more than anybody besides Colorado, who was way out in front on all this. And I think Arizona is is looking at best available options and survival, and they they kind of like what they see here. So, um, and I, I I'm thrilled for the Big Twelve. It's not this isn't Oklahoma or Texas you're adding, but I think you've done really really well for yourself considering what it looked like you know uh a year ago two years ago months ago i don't know you know so i think that you you've you've brett your mark has done really well for this league i think that you are ironically you're in this spot uh it, which is i think a look it, you you didn't win realignment but you've you've survived realignment if you're the big 12 and it's because oklahoma and texas bailed out well before USC and UCLA did, you know, and you had a head start on this whole landscape and process. You made some right moves, but you added some schools and, uh, and, and all that. <clears throat> and I, and I do, and in some ways I'm, I'm going to semi feel bad for like the Oregon States, the Washington States, and some of these schools that really had nothing to do with any of this, that they, they, they couldn't control their fate. They, they, you know, because you're right, it was USC that was calling the shots with everything and I think you're doing everything to placate to USC, and then they turn around and hose you, uh, and which is kind of what Texas Sound did. Sound familiar? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's kind of what Texas did here yeah. uh, in, in the Big 12. It sounds exactly familiar. And and I just think that some of these folks were just, uh, you know, passengers, and it sucks, uh, you know, for them, but it, it is well, what it is. Here's what – here's ahead. the one thing. If Arizona State – I don't think this is a possibility – you know, and, and we now know the Big Ten is now semi-engaged with Oregon and, and Washington, okay? I think they're they're even talking money now. They've been vetted. They're, they're cleared for takeoff. It's just an economic situation now. And you're even going to see, we'll give you half a share for the duration of the term. You know, so in other words, you know, 30-ish million, you know, is what we would expect to pay, you know, Oregon and, and Washington for the duration if you're the Big Ten. And then Washington is saying we need we need a lot more than that just for travel alone. So anyway, so that 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 deal is kind of a, a separate deal. What was not uh, really clear yesterday is the Stanford and Cal duo. It, you know, I, I don't know what would happen. I'll just toss this out there because I don't think this is the way this is going to go. But I'd be remiss if we didn't just mention it as a possibility because you never know. If if Arizona State is just not real keen on things i mean w would you consider one of those two you know just to you know if no. they came to you and it was like hey i i'll do it and you're like okay or, you know i mean i i don't know I'm, I'm just tossing that out there because those are i don't know uh, i i would still be rooting for arizona state just because the geography and, and the proximity to arizona and all those things but anyway, i think I, about uh like smart people in bow ties are probably like well of course we would take Cal, like a Berkeley on the list of Big 12, low. of course. Can you imagine what that would do for us when we're summering on Martha's Vineyard and we told them, hey, we got Berkeley into the league. But day-to-day uh, -day headache, hell no. I wouldn't yeah. touch either one of those with a 10-foot pole, and I think the feeling is mutual. <laughs> so I doubt we'll have to worry about that, Chris. Look, l let the most logical situations play out so far. If When we let the most logical situations play out so far, it winds up like I think many have been calling it uh, for months and months and months now, which is uh, four uh, appropriate fits making their way to the Big 12. And I hope that's the way the dust settles. It'll make it easier uh, on everybody, including uh, those four that we have discussed so much. But maybe you get the second here today or within the next 24 hours or so. So keep your head on a swivel. That's just like status quo this time of year anyway. Why? Because fall camp is upon us. Texas Tech Media Day going down yesterday and coming up ahead. We're looking to the Red Raiders. We'll hear from Joey McGuire, and we're going to dive into an offensive line conversation hearing from Rusty Stats and talking about his former partner in crime, Cole Spencer, who spent time already on campus. But, of course, getting our first look at him, we hope, whenever the regular season begins, in a Red Raider uniform. We'll talk about what that could do for Stephen Hamby and that offense up front. And, of course, what happens with those guys is what happens for the team at large so a very very important conversation upcoming you don't want to miss the next on locked on texas tech
First, today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. And in this day and age, every new hire can feel like a huge gamble. And when we're talking about your business or livelihood, that's not ideal. But LinkedIn Jobs is here to help by helping you find the best qualified candidates available fast and for free, all on one easy to use and secure platform. Simple but specific targeting tools allow you to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to consider. They go beyond just resume data by using insights from your job post, company, and their 875 million member profiles to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates faster than anyone else. So go to LinkedInJobs.com slash LockedOnCollege. That's LinkedInJobs.com slash LockedOnCollege today to identify the most qualified candidates and connect with them fast and for free. Just like a bad hire could sink your ship, the right hire could take your business to new heights this year. And it's no coincidence that small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. It's so easy. Even a podcast host could do it. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free today with LinkedIn jobs. Terms and conditions apply. Joining us on Locked On at Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network. Always glad to have you along for the ride. Subscribe on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts so you never miss an episode. With Chris, I'm Casey. We're turning to Red Raider football now to wrap up today's conversation. Chris, Texas Tech Media Day going down yesterday. Want to get to some things that stood out to us, including some things along the offensive line up ahead. We'll also hear from Joey McGuire. You might have heard some conversation if you tuned in to any of the uh, Texas Tech Media Day festivities yesterday, but possibly some of what you did not hear on the mic uh, was interesting because this has been heard within the building, Chris. A general theme passed along this morning. I got to take it in prior to our episode today. Now I've got a wall to repair in my living room because it did get me a little and. Last year, hey, we were under the radar. That's a good place to be. That the best place to be is when expectations are high. Get used to it. It's always going to be that way. And now let's go out and prove everybody right. We know we're better than you. We don't give a f- if you know it or not. We don't. We don't give a f- if you give us your best game. We're going to give you our best game, and we're going to beat the f- out of you. Let's go! <laughs> You know, th- this is uh, this has been the the theme of much of the off season. You know, we we've talked about it. We've kind of tried to the psychology part of this whole thing, and as we kind of started to see this play out, like with the uh, embracing of expectations, right? And like, and we we've touched on it repeatedly. The the head coach is the one that's really running toward the light at the end of the tunnel. He's not running away from it, and. I think that th- this is a mindset that he's trying to get across to his his guys, and you know, being around them so much yesterday, boy, it's uh. And, and granted, we were around some of the new guys, but we're also around a lot of the older guys, and it's just uh, a feeling of maturity. Uh, I I think that one of the themes that and Joey actually touched on this after several of his players individually did. But when you start hearing guys talk about, I, I've, I've been trying to concentrate with my sleep pattern and trying to be organized with when I eat and what I put in my body and all these things that you're like, whoa, this is like kind of next level stuff, which is typically, and I even said to, I think it was Josiah Pierre, he starts talking to me like this. Tyler Owens talked to me about this, totally separate. And, and it was... You know, and, and both of them kind of like, you know, I said, man, this is what professional guys do. This is like, you know, when you're a professional athlete, you have your own chef and all that because you're really your, your body is your, you know, is your livelihood and, and all that. Yes. <laughs> and, and and they both kind of said in different ways. Well, that's what coach tells us, man. Act like a pro. And and what 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 is what is fun or what should be fun for the fans is that they're all listening to everything that he says. They're not out goofing around video gaming or, 
you know, out causing, you know, just partying or whatever. I mean, these guys are structured. Uh, they're trying to treat I mean, because what have I always told you about Tyler Shuck? You know, I think he treats it like a pro. And I think some of that is rubbed off on a lot of these guys, too. So uh, it's just funny when you watch a college player come into come into his career. It's like they kind of got to figure out the world a little bit. It's college. It's like, it's fun. It's like there's, there's, there's females around. There's lots of stuff to do. There's, there's all kinds of things going on. And, and then it, it, there's always comes a point where it's like, man, I don't have too much time left doing this. I better lock it in. I don't. I, I need to grow up and and do it quickly. I need to mature uh, if I want to do this at the next level and all that stuff. Anyway, I, my point is is that I just think that that it's a very mature football team, and and you should be right because you literally have age on your side. I mean, on purpose. Yeah, in a lot I think of ways that, that's by design. Team. Yeah. Uh, hope to see some of that bear some good fruit. And yeah, what you're saying there is just kind of hitting me as far as some general life advice, right? I don't know, maybe somewhere in my 70s or what I'm going to think, man, I should really get busy. Or I, <laughs> can I do this on the next level? I Heaven, can I come in, God? Okay, speaking of God. <laughs> no, speaking of the head coach, Texas Tech head coach, <laughs> Joey McGuire, let's take a listen because he also had a warning for Red Raider fans who are sitting on their hands whenever it comes to getting in the Jones or at least making accommodations to get in to the Jones. We had an announcement of a sellout sand season tickets earlier this week. So I don't know what that actually translates to, but anyway, they said sell out for the Oregon game, except if you want to buy season tickets, then there's a seat available to you. So just keep that in mind. And that's something that Joey McGuire wanted to remind you of as well. I do apologize uh, for some popping in the audio. I guess the program and this head coach is just so white hot that even his comments come with a little sizzle. Uh, one thing I do want to remind everybody, we're less than 150 season tickets away from being sold out there. Y'all saw that the Oregon game sold out, and so if you don't get your tickets, it's going to be like basketball and baseball. Uh, you will not be able to get them ever again because uh, <laughs> we're expecting to have a great year and just continue on that. And so I just encourage everybody because we definitely need 60 minutes of us. Um, we already have it that game one, but we need it, you know, game two. Uh, at home against Tarleton State and for the rest of the year. And they're keeping a list, by the way, of who's not there. So they I know mean, ever ha again. Have some bleeping <laughs> confidence. Uh, I mean, Joey McGuire is like, I mean, you, you better better pony up. Not gonna, you're not going to get another chance. Um, <laughs> that was the first thing he said, too. You know, he talked straight numbers, which I knew that he would. He went through you know, jerk cleans and squats and bench press and all these, all these numbers and talk GPS and how fast the team was and all that stuff. I, uh, man, we're a little up against the clock, but I'll always allow any, any time for Chris levels, jerk clean notes. You got anything on that you want to include, or should we just keep rolling? <laughs> I'm not even sure what that is. <laughs> I, I, I looked at John Harris next to me. I'm like, you, you ever done a jerk clean? He's like, he just kind of laughed. He's like, no. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> so yeah, but, uh, uh anyway. Anyway, yeah. Joey McGuire does, and the Red Raiders do. That's right. You got okay. It. All right, we're going to continue with this Texas Tech football conversation coming up ahead. Want to hear from a guy who's gotten a lot of mentions this offseason on this show because they're counting on him in a big way, but he's not the only one. We're going to hear from Rusty's stats, but also want to talk about the way that he and Cole Spencer were discussed a little bit yesterday in tandem, obviously, being former Western Kentucky guys. And, uh, man, long time coming for Cole Spencer to make his Red Raider debut because of – his experience this season ago. We'll recap there, but hear from Rusty Stats as to what brought him to Texas Tech and talk about what those two guys in particular, but from a bigger, bigger picture point of view as well, uh, what kind of impact they could have along that offensive line this season. That's next on Locked on Texas Tech. First, today's episode brought to you by eBay Motors. And if you want a championship team, you need championship parts that fit together just right. And it's no different with your vehicle. Every part's got to fit. Exactly right. And that's where eBay Motors comes in. With eBay's guaranteed fit, you can be sure every part you need fits exactly right the first time, every time. Just head on over to ebaymotors.com, add your ride info to the My Garage portal, and look for the green check to know the part is going to be an exact fit or you're getting your money back. No risk. In sports, life, or anything in between, confidence is going to be the name of the game. And that's exactly what you're going to have when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from and with the right parts guaranteed, you're going to be back in the game and on the road in no time. So get the right parts, the right fit, and at the right prices on ebaymotors.com. 
now. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. Great to be with you again on Locked On at Texas Tech with Chris. I'm Casey coming to you from the great state as we are wrapping up what has been an interesting week to say the least. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube or wherever you got this podcast so you miss nothing if it happens on either radar this weekend, Red Raider or realignment, as we talked about earlier on in the program. Uh, when words like imminent are used, uh, swivel time is definitely necessary. So keep that head. 360 degrees, like an owl, like a lemur, like a meerkat. I don't know what the description is, but you want to be paying attention. And the best way to do so is to subscribe on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts so you miss nothing. We're wrapping up today's conversation on the offensive line, one of my favorite places to spend time in conversation, Chris. And, of course, uh, Texas Tech often, like well, just about every other football team, will go as far as an offensive line or the trench work will take them, hoping for improved consistency uh, in 2023. And, of course, you've got some new faces to consider there. One of those we'll hear from in just a second and Rusty Stats, but also a semi-new face in Cole Spencer, whose season last year was derailed before it ever got started because of injury. Uh, but anticipating seeing these guys in tandem up front this year and hoping that that's going to translate into some really good things for Stephen Hamby and that Texas Tech offense. Let's start with Rusty Stats because this is a new face, Chris, and a really intriguing one. And I want to let you take a listen to what he had to say as to what was intriguing to him about Texas Tech. A lot of things. Uh, well, first and foremost, uh, I uh, played under Stephen Hamby and Zach Kitley at WKU, and I just adored those guys. Um, you know, they're some of my favorite coaches I've ever had, so that was easy. And then everything I heard about Joey McGuire, man, and this culture was just awesome. Uh, positive energy, just you know, this energy that he has, it's uh, infectious, and that's the way I like to play football, energetic, high tempo. And, uh, you know, I just knew that they were on the rise and they were going to be a you know Big 12 championship uh, competitor. So all that put together, man, I was, there was, it was a no-brainer for me. You, you know, I had a, <clears throat> had a long conversation with uh, Rusty yesterday. Shout out to his mom, too. Uh, he said she's always been very engaged and interested in whatever team I've been on. So... I'm glad we got uh, the pronunciation of his last name correctly. He he said he goes people, he goes people would sometimes think I was like German, and he's like Rusty yeah. Stotts, you know, and like all, all you know. There, there's all these kinds of different uh, you know phonetic pronunciations of 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 what people thought his name was, but it's very simple actually. And she would always get frustrated with people going, "How do you screw this up so bad?" It's very simple, but it's that extra A, <laughs> Mrs. Stats. That, that we're simple country color. boys, man. I know that's, that's right. Man. That's right. And, you know, that's what Rusty is, too. You know, that's what I appreciated about him is that this is a guy that knew exactly what he wanted. Uh, I think he was sold on Hamby and Kitley, and and he had said, if I ever have the chance uh, to to play with those guys again or for those guys again, I'm in. Um, And and I think that he will tell you that Joey McGuire has blown his socks off just because, I mean, I think Joey is like – unlike anybody he's ever been around. And he knew the age of this team. He knew Cole Spencer and, and all that. And so and, and what, what you're going to hear about Rusty is that Zach Kelly is going to tell you that our offense will go this much faster, however much that is, because of Rusty. That he, He's solely responsible for it. And, you know, Cole Spencer was like, it's, it's kind of – demonic and watching him like what he does after each play because it's like I, I'm just trying to kind of get up off the ground and he's looking to see what referee has the ball what hash they're on he's sprinting up to the to the line I mean it's kind of like a game within the game and he goes and I get up and I'm sprinting trying to catch what he goes you can never catch him or beat him to the spot <laughs> but he goes he's an energizer bunny you know he just he, he never gets tired. He plays really fast. He's a he's over three hundred pounds, and mm-hmm. and but it, it's a mindset. And I think everybody has kind of had to elevate a little bit because of the the level that Rusty plays at, and the the speed with which he plays at. And he will tell you too 
look, I mean, you come from Western Kentucky to play at Texas Tech, it's a different level. But he will tell you that going against Tony and Jalen every day has made him that much better as an offensive lineman because he's going against legit defensive tackles day in and day out. And he's had to step his game up, and he's like, but I can play at this level. There's no doubt. And everybody else agrees. Let's get to the other guy I wanted to mention here because these two were discussed a little bit yesterday in tandem because of their similar background. Uh, and Cole Spencer, Chris, and I, I know that this is probably a name that Tech fans will have to refamiliarize themselves with uh, whenever the season gets started, if you ever knew of him at all, because the train was derailed before we ever got going last year, unfortunately, because of injury. But I got to say, and maybe, again, not the sexiest thing to anticipate as far as an O-lineman is concerned, but he's one of the most anticipated players for me personally that I'm looking forward to seeing on the field. And, again, it could really be part of making up a much different makeup uh, for this offensive line than what they were a season ago. And it wasn't supposed to work this way uh, because I think Cole is a big reason why Rusty is here. You know, that that was just an added deal. Look, teammates, man, I get to play right next to this guy that I played against before or played next to before and all that stuff. But, you know, Cole was, you know, supposed to have played last year. Then that, that was going to be it. Then the next phase of his life, whether that's professional football or or whatever. Um, he, he cooks a lot of brisket, too, by the way, does uh, this Cole Spencer. So I wanted to make sure I mentioned that. Some locally raised High Plains, Texas Prime. <laughs> Very nice. Let's get in touch, Cole. Shout out. <laughs> and so, I, but but Cole is, um, he's going to be one of these, you're right, we're going to talk uh, Rusty, we're going to talk Baskerville, we're going to talk Linton, you're going to talk uh, McCray, uh, Lux, uh, on and on. But Cole Spencer is a key addition to this team, and it's, it's you know, because he is an addition because he didn't play last year. Not, 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 you know, just he was dinged up and everything. But I, I think, uh, I, I think that you have one of the best interiors of an offensive line in the Big 12 conference. And I think, uh, I think Cole, you know, again, would have been the best offensive lineman on your team last year had he been healthy. That was shared by more than a few folks uh, that knew what he was capable of and then knew kind of what they were watching play out in front of them. And I think Rusty is in that same category. And we all know what Dennis Wilburn did for you last year, and he's this much better. And now all three of them get to play and and start and and do some different things. So uh, I'm, I'm excited about that group, and that's, that's the group that I think Joey is the most excited about because he, he let off – part of the press conference yesterday was like one thing we had to get better at was in the trenches. If you want to win a championship, you've got to get better up front on either or both sides of the ball. And yeah. we we've tried to do that. And are we there yet? I don't know, but we're getting there. And I think, you know, Rusty and Cole on the offensive line certainly have as much to do with that as anybody. Man, lots to look forward to, and we're just getting started with uh, fall camp beginning and pads soon to come, and then many things to overreact to for the next month. So should be a lot of fun as we gear up for September 2nd. Hope you'll join us for all of that. And, of course, as we stay in touch with the realignment radar, there's no telling what's coming down the pipe in days to come. So make sure you're subscribed on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts so you never miss a thing. Chris, enjoyed it all week long, my man. And we'll see if we have reason to reconvene, uh, possibly coming up this weekend. Let's stay in touch. But uh, otherwise, we'll see you on the other side for another action-packed week, man. Thanks for the time. Under the radar for the birds, man. Uh, expectations will remain high. Expect it. <laughs> it's it's not going anywhere. Uh, but, yeah, have a good weekend, everybody. <laughs> and enjoy uh, – Enjoy uh, one more kind of, you know, non-football related weekend for the most part. But, uh, yeah, it is here and uh, we will be here next week and we'll see what happens. Maybe with more conference members. We yeah. shall see. It might be a more crowded Big 12 landscape the next time we get together. Looking forward to it and hope to see you then. For Chris, I'm Casey. Have a great weekend. We'll see you for the next round on Locked on Texas Tech.